It's been said that the difference between a combine driver and a really sharp combine operator may be about $10 an hour. You can make that and much more by being able to make the most of a combine's capacities and capabilities. The more knowledgeable you are about getting the peak performance out of your combine, the better your harvest will be. Let's quickly review some of the fundamentals. First, of course, be sure the corn is ready to shell. And be sure the combine is adjusted for the crop conditions as given in the operator's manual. Operate at full throttle because all the corn head and separator functions are based on a prescribed constant feeder speed. Run the corn head as high as possible without losing any of the ears. Set the stalk rolls as close as possible to eliminate excessive trash and stalks. Try to keep the machine full at all times. This helps prevent excessive cracking and loss of kernels. But don't overload it. Select the proper ground speed to avoid overloading. Use the correct cylinder speed as indicated in the operator's manual. Adjust the air blast so it'll be strong enough to keep the corn silk and trash moving rearward. Be sure the chaffer sieve and shoe sieve are correctly adjusted to separate the kernels from the trash. Make a frequent tailings check and adjust the wind and sieves to keep the tailings at a minimum. Now let's take it from the front and review some of the important components, operations, and adjustments. The corn head's function is to deliver ears to the feeder in an even, continuous flow with a minimum of trash and stalks. Ideally, no stalks. The dividers pick up and guide the stalks to the stalk roll's rotating live action points, which feed the material into the stripper sections. As the stalk rolls pull stalks through the corn head, the stripper shields snap off the ears, and the gathering chain elevates them to the beater and auger. Meanwhile, the stalk rolls continue to pull the stalks on through and leave them on the ground behind the machine. Adjust the gathering height to suit field and crop conditions. Position the spring-cushioned live action points of the dividers low enough to guide any down or leaning corn to the gathering chains and stalk roll points. The stalk roll spacing and timing are set at the factory, with the two spirals mating midway between each other and with the knife-edged stripping sections directly opposite one another, and as close together as possible without touching. Never change the spacing between the stalk roll centers. If, due to wear, this spacing becomes as much as an eighth of an inch, shim the sections closer together with shims at the bolting points. The timing of the gatherer chains is factory set with the flights or lugs directly opposite each other. The chains are spring loaded to hold correct tension at all times. If you keep the chain tension correctly adjusted per your manual, the chain can never get loose enough to jump a sprocket, which is the only way the flights or lugs can get out of time and alignment. Keep each hold down guide as close to the chain as possible without any rubbing on the chain's connecting link pin. Never allow more than an eighth of an inch clearance or you'll be getting material lodged between the guide and the chain. Keep the stripper shields as wide apart as possible without ear damage, shelling, or loss of mature ears. This way you get easier, cleaner picking and minimize the trash that goes into the separator. With this shaft, you can readily adjust the stripper shield. There is one just like it on the other side. Keep the ear savers spaced so they'll permit easy passage of the stalk, but close enough together to hold ears from dropping forward. For best auger operation, 
keep the auger in parallel alignment to the trough. With a three-quarter inch clearance between the flights and the trough bottom at the feeder housing. You position the auger by means of adjustable auger bearing support brackets at each side of the corn head. Keep the feed conveyor chain fairly tight per your manual, but not excessively so. Correct tension ensures satisfactory life of chain and sprockets. Most combine feeder drives are equipped with an electric clutch, so you can disengage the platform and feeder while letting the separator continue to run. If an electrical malfunction occurs and the clutch cannot be readily serviced, yet the combine must be used, you can convert to mechanical drive with two lockout studs provided in the toolbox. But these are for emergency use only. The feeder transports the materials to the cylinder and concave, where all of the shelling and about 90% of the separation take place. To aid in the threshing of different crop conditions, you may vary the cylinder speed, run it faster for harder threshing materials, and slower for easier threshing material. But keep in mind, overspeeding the cylinder may give you cracked kernels on cobs. Cylinder filler bars are a must in corn to keep the ears from passing through the rasp bars. In effect, the concave retards and holds the material while the cylinder beats and rubs the shells and kernels from it. Along with cylinder speed, you accommodate different crop conditions by adjusting the concave's distance from the cylinder. You adjust the rear concave clearance by means of this bolt. The front spacing is adjusted by this linkage, which is connected to a control on the operator's platform, so you can change it on the go. You can get either a high wire concave or a low wire concave. High wire concave is recommended for corn because the high wires produce more pressure against the material for easier cleaning. With either concave, remove wires as necessary to ensure maximum separation. Adjust the cylinder stripper as close as possible to the rasp bars so it just barely clears them. This prevents back feeding and wrapping. The beater strips material from the cylinder, carries it over a grate, and helps separate any loose kernels carried in the material. It tends to slow down the material and helps prevent back feeding to the cylinder. For corn, adjust the grate as low as possible, leaving maximum space for cobs and heavy trash to move through. The front check flap, seen here with straw rather than corn cobs, retards the material to allow proper straw rack operation, but it must not be allowed to affect the overall flow. Raise the check flap to accommodate a heavy volume of cobs, husks, and trash, and lower for small volume crops. The straw racks move the material away from the beater, separate the remaining kernels, and move the material out the rear of the combine. If the straw racks are plugging, simply pull every other wire to make larger openings for the cobs and husks to fall through. Riser extensions are a must in corn. They bounce the material higher, allowing final separation of kernels. More and more users are equipping their combines with straw choppers because a chopper gives you several advantages. With a chopper, you can cut and spread the material more uniformly to affect quicker deterioration and easier incorporation into the soil and minimum tillage and cultivation next season. For corn, you withdraw the concave blades to the fully retracted position. The rotor blades do all the chopping. Set the deflector support in either the middle or the lower position to keep cobs from being thrown out far behind. The cleaning of the corn starts when the kernels and pieces of trash are dropped on the grain pan. 
The shaking action floats the trash to the top, while the kernels stay at the bottom. The troughs not only agitate the material, they even it out and meter it onto the chaffer sieve in a measured flow. To aid in the separation of the chaff from the kernels, we use sieves. The chaffer sieve should be adjusted to allow all unthreshed pieces of cobs to drop through. The shoe sieve is set as the final separator. Or adjusting the air blast. Or both. If you're getting cracked kernels in the tank sample, try reducing your cylinder speed. Or increasing your cylinder concave clearance. Or both. As we said at the start, the difference between a combine driver and a really sharp combine operator can be maybe $10 an hour in additional grain saved. The more capable you are at getting the peak performance out of your combine, the more profitable your harvest will be.